Today I've got for you a really useful piece of tech that you might not have ever seen before. This is the HK MLC 75 inch smart board. Now I've had a chance to use this smart board for the past week now and it can do a lot of different things. And it's not just made for any one person. Anybody can find a use for this smart board, whether you're a business and you do a lot of conferencing or you're a teacher, you work from home or in a school. Even for me being a content creator, this monitor would be great for behind the camera so I could scribble some notes or a script that I can easily see to help keep me on track when I'm recording my videos. Now I do want to let you know that I was sent this monitor to do this review, but there was no script that I was told to follow. Everything that I'm telling you about the smart monitor are my own words, and we're going to find out what it can do and what it can't. And because there is so much to go over with this smart board, this is going to be a two-part video. In this first part, we're going to be going over the whole smart board. I'm going to show you everything that it can do, all of its features. Then in the second video, we're going to take a little deeper dive. We're going to see what we can connect to the smart board, what it looks like, and kind of go more into the technicals. This monitor also does come in different sizes in case 75 inches is just too big for you. And if you want to pick it up, I will be putting product links in the video description. And the really great thing about this smart board is it's an all-in-one. Not only is it a giant tablet, but it also acts as a whiteboard. If you've ever used a regular whiteboard before with markers, you'll know that sometimes the markers don't easily come off the board. And if you have a lot of stuff written on the whiteboard, it takes forever to take it off. With this, all you need to do is swipe and everything disappears. And because it's so big and so bright, it can easily replace your projector, giving you a much better picture and making it easier to see in a brighter environment. It's got dual stereo speakers on the front of the monitor, and it also has a very capable built-in computer, so you don't have to worry about having a computer somewhere else in the room. It's all built right into this big screen. Now some of the highlights of the smart board is it's got a 4K ultra high definition display. It's got a dual OS using Windows 10 and Android 12. It's got 20 touch points so you can easily have 20 people touching the screen with their finger all at the same time. It's got multi-person use and annotation support. It's made of an explosion proof tempered glass and also has pretty slim bezels. Now let's go over some of the specifications really quick. Like I mentioned before, this has a dual OS and the specifications are different for each one. It uses Android 12 with eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of internal storage. It's got a 1.5 gigahertz eight core A55 CPU and a quad core Mali G52 at 600 megahertz for the GPU. For the PC side, it's using an Intel 11th Gen Core i5 at 2.6 gigahertz. It's got eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage with an Intel Iris Xe graphics chip. It also comes with a 16 foot power cable. It comes with a multifunctional remote control, two magnetic styluses that you can use to write on the smart board. And it also comes with a pretty heavy duty mount in case you wanna mount it on your wall. So on the front of the smart board, we have two USB 3.0s. We have a connection for an extra touch controller. We have an HDMI port and a USB type C. On the back side of the monitor, we have a TF card reader. We have a USB 2.0, another USB 3.0, another connection for a touch controller, two HDMIs, a VGA port, and a port for PC audio. On the underside of the monitor, we have our ethernet port. We have a coax cable. We have a audio out and a serial connection along with our two Wi-Fi antennas. Then for our PC connection, again, we have our two Wi-Fi antennas that are separate from the Wi-Fi that we're gonna be using for the smart board itself. We have two USB 2.0s, four USB 3.0s, an ethernet port, a USB type C port, a display port, HDMI, and a connection for our mic and headphones. And on the other side, it has a dedicated power switch in case you want to totally cut power to the whole smart bar itself. It also comes with four of these really nice metal handles that I think every TV and monitor should have at this side because it helps you lift up the TV onto your stand or your wall if you happen to mount it. 
Now, like I showed you before, the smart board does come with a really sturdy mount in case you want to mount it onto your wall, but I don't have a lot of real estate in my house to put a 75 inch monitor. So I actually opted to put it on this movable stand. So now I can use the smart board pretty much anywhere I need in my house. And if you guys are interested in picking that up as well, I'll have a link in the description for that too. Now for the unboxing, it was fairly easy to unbox. You will definitely need two people to lift this up out of the box. It weighs about 143 pounds. Me and my wife were able to do it ourselves. And because the monitor has these really nice sturdy metal handles on each side of the monitor, it makes it very easy to move around. Now, as far as picture quality goes, this smart board has an amazing picture on it. And we're going to go more into depth on that in the second video. As far as build quality goes, this smart board has all metal on the front of the smart board, minus the screen, as well as the back of the smart board. So it feels very nice and premium. As far as the sound quality of the built-in speakers for the monitor, they actually sound fairly good. They're very clear, but they don't have a lot of range because they weren't really meant to do that. It's just a smart board. But if you want better sound, you can hook it up to a receiver or something like that. The screen's also not glossy. It's got a nice matte finish to help keep glare down, especially if you're using it in a brighter environment. So now let me show you all the cool things that this smart board can do. Now, when you first turn on the smart board, you can have it set to pretty much anything you want, whether that be the window system, the Android system, or one of the HDMIs. I just have it set to go right to Android, but we're gonna check out the whiteboard option first. And the way that I set it up to do that is you simply just swipe over to the left and it takes you right into your whiteboard. Now this doesn't have to be your whiteboard, Again, you can set it to go to pretty much anything you want. So if we swipe to the left, it goes to something. And if we swipe it to the right, it goes to something else from the Android homepage. And I'll show you how to do that in the settings later on. Now the touch works really well on this smart board too. It also has this really cool thing called the compass that you can pretty much move anywhere you want around the screen. And you can also have it turn off and fade away if you don't want to use it. But I just like to have it on my screen all the time because it has some features in there that are really cool and something that I use a lot. It has six of these little options here, which you can personally set to pretty much anything you want. Uh, I have it set to go home and to do, you know, a couple other things. And if you want to close it again, after a few seconds, you can have it kind of fold away or you can push it and it'll fold back up and then you can just kind of move it out of the way. Pretty cool. The whiteboard also has multiple pages. So if you've written down a whole bunch of things on one page and you want to keep that and go to another page, you can do that by simply just pressing this plus button over here. As you can see, it changed to page two, three, four, and so on. You can also delete pages right from here. Just click on this little option here and it brings up all the pages that you have and you can delete the ones that you don't want. The whiteboard also has some settings that you can change and all you need to do for that is simply press the three little lines here. It comes up with new. You can open up a previously saved whiteboard. You can save, save as, you can upload it to the cloud. You can scan, which is it makes a QR code that people can scan and it'll send that whole whiteboard directly to them. So if you're teaching or something like that, or you're having a conference and you have something on the whiteboard you wanna share with multiple people, all they need to do is scan the QR code and they can get the whole picture. It's pretty cool. You can also email the whole whiteboard to somebody that you want. We also have our settings here. We have our time display switch, which you can turn on the time in the, in the corner there, which makes it pretty convenient. And, in case you don't have a clock in your room. We have our background settings. You can change the color of the background to pretty much anything you want. We also have some different grids in case you know, you're teaching people how to uh, draw cursive or if you need to draw something out. There's quite a few different features here. You can also put a custom picture for the background as well, which is pretty cool. We have our email settings. You can choose from all these different options here or other. We have our taskbar switch here, which basically makes this toolbar hide in case you don't want it there all the time. I like it there, so I have it off, but if you turn it on, you can see that it will disappear after a few seconds. And then to bring that up, you just hit the little double arrow and it brings it back. 
And we also have our threshold adjustment where you can change the size of the eraser, the pen, and the thick pen. You can also have up to four different sections come up on the screen in case you happen to have four different people that want to draw on the screen. It'll allow them to have their own section. And if you notice, if you draw, you can't go over into somebody else's section. So it makes it really convenient and it won't interrupt other people that are using the board at the same time. We also have some color options and some thickness options for our pen as well. And as you can see, we do have two different styluses we can use with the smart board, but you can also just use your finger very easily if you want to, and you can also erase it with the back of your hand. Very cool. And like I showed you before, the smart board does come with two styluses, and the first option we have is for the stylus. But again, you can also use your finger. These styluses don't have any battery, so they're always ready to go. So for our settings, we have two different color settings for each side of the stylus. We have the thicker side, which we can change to a green. And for the thinner, we have a red. You can also change the thickness for the stylus. And then we also have some different pen options with some really cool options at the bottom here. One has a T on it. Basically what that does is it changes anything you write on the board in letters to an easy to read type. So if you have horrible handwriting, like I do, if you're typing on the board, it'll change that to a type that very everybody can easily see. That's pretty cool. It also works with cursive. So if you write something in cursive on the board, it'll change that to type as well. Pretty cool. And if you happen to make a mistake, you can easily press the back arrow and it'll erase whatever you did last. It records up to 20 steps. And the other option we have for the pens is the one for shapes. So this is pretty cool. If you're drawing any shapes or anything like that on the screen, it'll make it very crisp. So if you happen to draw a really horrible square, it'll make it really nice and even. If you draw a line on the screen, it'll make an arrow going towards the way that you actually drew the line. It's pretty cool. And if you want to erase the board, we'll hit the erase option. We have a couple of different options. You can use the one that it shows here, which is the regular eraser. We also have the option to select different things that you want to erase. So we'll just select that and it'll erase just the selection. And you also have the option to totally clear the whole board very easily by swiping this over to the side. Pretty cool. Now next up we have the selection tool, which is right here. This allows us to select certain things that are on the board and you can do quite a few different things with it. You can resize it if you need. You can also kind of move it around the board if you need to. You can also rotate it. We also have the option to change the color of that object of the object if we want. And we can also uh, copy that to make a duplicate of it and also trash it if we don't want it. Here we have some different shapes that we can use in case we're, you know, drawing something. Here we have a little triangle that's like 3D. You can kind of make it as big or as small as you want. We also have some half circles. Cool star. And again, if you made a mistake or something like that, you can very easily go to the select and you can select that object and make it as big or as small as you want. Kind of separate out the stars. You can also insert quite a few different things while you're using the whiteboard as well. With the plus button here, we have the option to insert a picture. You can select pretty much anything you have saved on your drive. We'll just select this picture here and we'll hit the plus. 
So it adds the picture and you can move it around if you want. We can also add in some columns and tables as big or as small as you want there. And the columns will adjust to whatever you type put inside of them. So if we put an extra large triangle, it'll actually adjust it to where the triangle is perfectly inside, which is neat. We'll select this. And here, as you can see, it has the grids along the top and the side. You can also kind of delete columns, insert columns, whatever you need right there. And you can also resize that if you need. We'll just delete that whole thing. We also have some drawing tools, protractors, compasses, rulers, which will help you draw a perfectly straight lines if you need, just like that. And you can also kind of rotate this, move it where you need, and make your line. It's pretty cool. You can also put a HDMI or Windows 10 somewhere. So we'll kind of put this window, kind of move it down over here. Uh, you can also minimize it. You can make it the whole screen if you need to, or we can actually resize that if we want as well. Move that off to the side, and you can also get rid of it if you need to. We can also insert a mind map, which is this little option over here, right there. And we can also change them by touching them just like this. We can add more kind of columns if we need. And when you write inside of them, it'll adjust to whatever you wrote, which is pretty cool. We also have our PDF reader, which is this V right here. You can open up any PDF you want. Again, you can also kind of move this around. You can resize it to whatever you need. We can also insert a video. Choose a video we have here. I have a YouTube video. Hit the plus. And again, you can move this around while it's playing. We can insert a web page in case you happen to need to look something up really quick. The only thing with the web page is it doesn't stay around when you're doing other things. So you need to use it and then go back to whatever you're doing. There's also a really cool voting app that they have in here that you can have right here. You can ask a question to students or coworkers or whatever. They have the option to choose whatever you type in here. They can either put their name or they can actually have the voting anonymous as well. Then you can go to the next step. You have a single choice, mobile choice. You could also do the anonymous voting like I mentioned, and then you can just start voting. Everybody scans the QR code on their device and they can choose to vote. And at the end of the voting, it'll tally everything up, everybody who said yes and everybody who said no. And you can also have a timer. So if maybe you're doing a test or something like that, you can set a timer for an, an hour and an alarm will also go off when the timer is done if you want to do that too. And then the last button we have here is to toggle between multi-touch and zoom. So right now it's on multi-touch. So if I take my five fingers and run them across the board, you'll see five different lines. And if we change that to the zoom, you can use two fingers to zoom in and zoom out of whatever you have on the board. It's pretty cool. <laughs> And then the last thing we have are these two little arrows here. And basically what that does is it changes the options here from over here to the other side of the board. In case you happen to have somebody else with you or you want to use that side of the board, you have the options to do that too. Now we also have these bars on each side of the screen that will always be there. Whether you're on Android, your, warp, your whiteboard, or your Windows, these bars will always come up if you swipe over or if you just tap near the area, you can open them up like that. That allows you to go back home. This allows you to open up the different 
um, applications that you have running on your tablet. Here's the annotate. Here is the different options we have for a lot of different things. And this little option right here are your sources so you can change between the HDMIs and the Windows operating system. And if you want to get rid of anything, just like on a regular tablet, you just swipe up and the application closes, or you can also close all. So we can easily go back to the main menu, either using the bars or my little compass up here, which will take us back to our home screen. It also has a quick option for a small whiteboard in case you need to just draw, jot something down really quick. Wherever you are on the Android system, all you need to do is simply swipe up from the bottom and it opens up this little whiteboard. So you can write on it with your finger or the stylus. You can move the whiteboard around with two fingers. And you can also have the option to change colors. You can totally erase the whiteboard. Or you can also scan the QR code to send the whiteboard to pretty much whoever you need. And then to make it go away, you just simply hit the button there. Now for the settings I showed you earlier from the board, we have our quick options here, the little shortcut tools. You can turn off your ethernet. You can connect to your Wi-Fi. We have a hotspot option, our Bluetooth. You can also take a screenshot with this button here. We also have the vision care, which is for the blue light filter to make it a little easier on your eyes. We have our touch sensitivity, eco, which turns the brightness down to 25% and turns off the automatic brightness. You can swipe over for some more options. We have our touch lock in case you don't want any kids, you know, using your touch screen. We have our screen lock, which locks the whole screen down. We have listen alone, which turns off the screen, but still plays whatever audio you have playing. We have our screen off. You can also turn off the computer with the quick option over here to turn off your computer. We have power off, which turns off the whole smart screen. We have restart. We have freeze, which freezes the screen. We also have a screen down option, which if you're on the computer or one of the HDMIs, it'll bring the screen down a little bit. I'm not sure why it does that. Maybe if people are shorter and they need to reach the top of the screen, something like that. We also have mute. We have auto backlight. We have spotlight, which if you want to highlight something specific on the screen, you have this little spotlight here. You can also make it kind of as dark or as light as you want for the background, or you can also change it to a square. And we also have a curtain feature in case you want to reveal something on the screen. You can easily just move this off to the side and it reveals whatever's underneath. And you can also pick different templates too by this little option here. There's quite a few different ones you can choose from. And then for the annotation, if there's something on the screen that you want to draw attention to or draw on, you can simply hit the annotate button, which is the little uh, pencil here. It kind of takes a screenshot of the whole screen, and then you can kind of draw, you know, anything you want that you want to talk about. You can change the color, the line width. You can also erase things just like you could on the other one. We can also hit that to generate a QR code to send that picture off to whoever we want. And then to get rid of that annotation, you can just hit this button here. But if you want to keep the annotation and come back to it later on, you want to make sure that you don't hit the X because it'll totally uh, get rid of the annotation. Just simply click this little button here. It'll minimize that annotation. So if you want to come back to it, you just hit the annotation button again. It'll reopen up the screen that you had. Go back to our first picture. And there's where we left off. Now you can also save this picture if you want as well by hitting the save. You can save it as a PDF or an image to the local storage. And then if you just don't care about whatever else is on the screen, you can just hit the X and it'll totally erase everything you just did. Now on our main screen of our smart board for Android, we have our Wi-Fi we're connected to. We also have the smart board temperature and it also does have a temperature protection. So if it gets too hot, it will shut itself down to keep it protected. But me using this monitor um, for long periods of time, it doesn't have any problems with going over temperature. I think that's for if you're maybe having it 
in like a bright light situation from the sun, the sun might be beating down on it and make it a little hotter than normal. And then we also have a little button here that allows us to easily switch our users. Right now I only have me and a guest set up, so we're just gonna use me again. Now on your main screen, there are a couple different options that we can change this to. I kind of like this configuration where you have uh, interactive uh, QR code that other people can use to either send pictures, messages directly to the smart board while you're using it. Um, or you can also change this to uh, one of the inputs as well. On the bottom here, we have our five different applications. We can only have five custom applications on here at any given time. The more applications does not count. It's only uh, these other five here that I had that I app that I added onto the smart board. And if we hold on one of them, you can kind of move them around in the order that you want it, or you can also uh, delete them by clicking the little minus button as well. And then to go back and just simply touch one of the applications. So really quick, I'll show you how this works. I'm gonna scan the QR code on the screen. It'll take you to a web page. So there's our web page, as you can see. You can do some role titles, text, or send a picture. So I'm gonna send some text. Click done and we'll send. It'll send that to the screen and you will see it show up right in that little interactive panel. There you go. So students or people in the conference can interact with people using the smart board right from there. Now, if we go back to our home, we'll go to our pictures and videos. We'll take a picture. So I took a picture of myself. I want to send it to the smart board. Sends it fairly quickly. And then I'll show up on that smart board. Another thing that this smart board does really well is it very easily allows users to cast to the screen as well. So here I have my iPad. I'm just going to mirror my screen. It takes about a couple seconds and it comes right up. It's that easy. As you can see, it shows everything on my screen here and it moves pretty well. You can also have multiple users cast all at the same time to the screen as well, and I'll show you more of that in the second video. Now again, like I said, this works just like a regular Android tablet. If we hit more applications, it takes us into our library and shows us all the applications we have installed on the smart board. So these are all the applications that come pre-installed on the smart board, and you can't uninstall most of these. So if I hold on one of these, you'll see it doesn't have any option to delete it. Try the YouTube and you can't delete that. So these applications, like I mentioned, come on the smart board and you can't really delete them. We do have some applications that I installed after the fact. And if I click and hold on one of these, you can see that we can uninstall them. Another option we have is a multi-window. So if you want multiple applications opened up at the same time, all you need, simply need to do is click and hold on the application, click free window, and it opens up a window for that application. Again, you can kind of move it and size it to wherever you want. If you want to open up another application, again, you can either do it from the library or you can come over here to the side, click on the quick options menu, it shows all the applications that you have in your tablet, again, if you wanna open up something else, just click and hold on that, and it quickly opens up another window. And you can have multiples of these going at one time. Do the same thing for Teams, free window. And there you go. So you can have quite a few different windows open for multitasking, which is pretty convenient. Now, another really cool application that's built into the smart board is the option to screen record. 
So no matter what you're doing on the screen, whether you're on your Android system or your Windows system, it will continuously record what you're doing on the screen and then allow you to save it as a file in your local storage. Here we have the screen record, little thing you can move around wherever you want. You can record sound if you have a microphone and you can also uh, record audio that's coming from the screen as well. So if we click this to start the recording, we can get out of here, go back to our main menu, swipe over, we'll go to our Windows 10. We can do some stuff on Windows. You open up the Windows folder here, go to Geekbench, open that up. Then we can also go back to our Android system and then we'll click stop. So here as you can see, it creates a file that you can rename if you want. It'll save it to its local storage. We can view it. Here is the screen record that I just did. As you can see, it shows everything on the screen. It's only in 1080p, it's not in 4K, so the best it's gonna be is the 1080p. Here, as you can see, we're going over to Windows 10, which it did record, everything we did on the screen. And then we can just quit that and go back to our main menu here. Another really cool thing that the screen recording does for the smart board is it actually allows you to record audio and video from the YouTube app. So if there's something on YouTube you wanna record, you can use the screen record option. The only thing is, again, it's only gonna record it in 1080p. The screen record is a great option if you're teaching or something like that on the screen. You can record everything you're doing and if for a student or something wasn't able to attend school that day, you can send the video to him and he can see everything you did for that day. Now for the rest of the built-in applications, here we have our mirroring application, we have our PDF application, we got the normal calendar, calculator, a picture gallery, hardware detection, which kind of optimizes your system for optimal use. We have a camera application if you happen to have a camera hooked up to your smart board, which I'll show you later on. We have a timer, system settings, we have that vote kit, our file manager to look at all the files we have on our Android system. We have our screen record, we have our whiteboard, welcome, which is kind of something that you can put to you know, welcome people when they're walking into your room or something like that. We have our Chrome, Gmail, YouTube, and our Play Store. So the mirroring actually has quite a few options within the application itself. So here we have the eShare with our IP address. This is the name of our share. If we come down here, we got quite a few more options. We can turn on the webcast option. We also have some options here for displaying more than one application. We have duplicate displays. Um, you can also invite for joining display group. You can have the smart board auto accept or you can have it like pop up so you have to accept somebody to be able to use it and you won't just have multiple people uh, <laughs> displaying their stuff on your screen. It'll show up in that list here. We also have a moderator control. You can share a screen or file. You can change the uh, settings for that the view co control and wireless annotation and floating moderator button. We also have some more settings over here. You can change the device name, the connection mode. We have device name, pin codes. We can also have a password, device name for floating window. We can have up to nine multiple screens, which is pretty cool. We'll look more into that in the second video. We can also show the device name, auto full screen, AirPlay visible, and our Chromecast. You can also connect your own storage up to the smart board as well, just like this flash drive I have here. You can simply just push it into the USB slot. It'll come up with a new device detected. We'll hit open. It immediately opens the file manager where you can see all the files that are on your drive. You can also select between the drive and your local storage. You also have some more options if you select one of the files on your flash drive, we'll simply press and hold to highlight that and that opens up our 
other options here. You can trash the file, you can copy and paste it, you can rename it, you can even add a new folder. Here on the side, we have our quick options for all your pictures, documents, videos, music, zip files, and APKs. We also have cloud storage as well that you can log into if you happen to have that. Another really nice thing that they've added into the SmartBoard is the connectors in the front of the SmartBoard are actually carry over from the Android system into the Windows. So it makes it super convenient to use flash drives you have. So I'm gonna plug in my USB Type-C flash drive into the Type-C port. We'll open up our file manager. It'll show you all the files that are in the USB drive. You can see it's the IV300. Now we'll switch over to our Windows 10. Go to our PC, and as you can see, it shows the same drive. So no matter what system you're on, you can always access whatever you have plugged into the USB ports in the front. And if you plug in a mouse and a keyboard into the smart board like I did, I plugged in my wireless dongle in the front here. I've got a wireless keyboard and mouse. And as you can see, <laughs> you can see the mouse right on the board. So you can easily use the PC or Android side, no matter where you are in your classroom, in your home or your office. And then if we switch back to our Android system, you can still see that it will show the little cursor here. So you can use that without actually having to touch the touch screen. And the cursor is also super smooth. So we'll select Google. Google Earth, and it opens up Google Earth right away. Now, like I mentioned before, the smart board also has a Windows computer built into it too. And the way that I have it set up is I can easily get to it just by swiping over to the right and it'll take me right into my Windows system. You don't have to have it set up that way. You can set it to swipe over to whatever you want, even one of the inputs. So here, again, we have our Windows 10 system. You can do everything you can do on a normal computer. Uh, you can hook up a mouse, you can hook up a keyboard to the screen, uh, you know, work from your desk or even your couch if you happen to have this in your house, and just use it as a normal computer. And in case you're not familiar with Windows 10, Windows also has a tablet option because this is a giant tablet. And when you turn that on, it kind of makes it easier to navigate and touch things on the screen where we can show all of our applications in here. And all you simply need to do is kind of touch it one time and it opens up the application. And if you wanna see what the PC can do, again, we'll go deeper into that in our second video. But just like on the Android system, touch works absolutely amazing on the Windows as well. As you can see, everything is nice and smooth. It's very quick. You can take one of the icons and kind of move it around. You can see there's really no lag whatsoever. It's nice and snappy on the Windows system. It also has a convenient little keyboard that pops up in the middle of the screen so you don't have to touch all over the screen with the bigger keyboard. It makes it very convenient. Then if we want to go back to our Android system, all we need to do is click on the one of the little bars here and go back to home. Now let's take a look at all the different settings that you can actually change for the smart board. So we'll click on our settings here. So the very first one is our network status. It shows our IP addresses, everything like that. Here we have our Wi-Fi where we can connect to different Wi-Fi systems. We have our Ethernet port, which we can turn on and off. You can also use the smart board as a hotspot. You can turn that on and off. And for our general, we have the themes that we can change. Here is the other theme that I didn't use before. This is what it looks like. We have that little section here with the QR code or whatever uh, somebody sent to the smart board. Here we have those applications. And then here we have like a message of the day that you wanna put. You can put, hi. We can have a countdown, or you can just save it and it displays whatever you typed in there. Here we have some different wallpapers you can choose from. You can also throw these away if you don't want them, or you can also put your own wallpaper if you want. 
We have auto loop, which cycles through the pictures every 20 seconds. Here we have our small components, and this is basically what's on your home screen. You can turn on and off a reminder. You can have the presentation window, uh, your channel preview, or scan to order the screen, which I had on there so everybody could interact with the smart board. You can change that off. You can turn that off and you can switch to channel preview, which is showing the Windows oper operating system right now instead of uh, the QR code. We also have the negative one screen, which is where you can change what the swipes do from your launcher. So here I have my whiteboard and I have the Windows operating system, but again, you can change the swipe to the right of pretty much any application you have set. And you can also change your inputs as well for the other swipe. Here we have our sound options. You can change the volume. You can set a max volume in case you don't want to like blow out everybody you have in your room. You can set it to a nice level and it won't go, it won't allow you to go over that. So you can see it goes right to 75 because it's set at 75. We have our balance left and right. We have our custom sound modes, standard meeting room, cinema. You can turn up the bass and the treble. Uh, we have our sound output, which is just being done from the smart board right now. We have our display. I have it all the way up at the highest brightness, which I believe is 400 nits. It's pretty bright. I have a lot of studio lighting on in here and you can very easily see the screen. We have our image modes, which you can change. Pretty nice. You can change the scale, contrast, and tone. We have the compass, which is that little circle that I have up here, like I mentioned before. You can have it always on. You can have it always fold uh, after a few seconds. You can have the fold state folded into small circles, or you can also have it fade away. I have it fading into small circles, like it. You can also have it fade away. I touch it. As you can see, it's totally gone. Now, if you want to bring it back, all you need to do is take your five fingers, put it on the screen for a few seconds, and that little compass will come back, no matter where you are on the screen. We also have a different style. You can make it the circle like I have here, or you can put a list, which I don't really care for because it shows like a list across the whole screen of your of all the things. You might like that. I'm not really too keen on that. I like everything all in one spot, so I opt to use the little circle. And then you can also make your compass custom. So everything that you see here you can change to make it do different things to what fits your situation the best. You can have it open, open, you know, pretty much any application you want. You can change to shortcuts or your input sources. We have gesture interaction. We have to activate the compass. You can turn that five finger activation on and off. We have sleep and wake up. So if you have that on, you can double tap the screen to make it turn off. And then if you want to turn it back on, if you just touch it, it won't turn on. You need to use two fingers, tap the screen back on, and the screen comes right back, which is pretty convenient to have if you have little kids always wanting to touch the screen. Here we have our screen record settings. So if you want to record the screen, you have the option between 720p and 1080. You can also change to record media sounds microphone sounds or both microphone and media sounds. And you can also change the screen record time limit all the way up to 120 minutes. Here's our device options. We have our Bluetooth. You can change the names for the Bluetooth and here are all the uh, Bluetooth devices in range. You can add a printer here. You can have a microphone controls and your camera controls if you have them connected to the smart board for your Zoom meetings or anything like that. We have our different channels, which are the inputs like the Windows option or the HDMIs. We have more settings. You can have it when there's no signal. You can have it redirect to a certain channel or you can have it do the last channel or just do nothing. We have our automatic redirect. So if you happen to connect something up to the smart board, um, like your tablet or something like that, it'll automatically change to that input automatically. 
we have auto wake up, we have power on channel. So when you first power up the system, you can have it set to turn on to pretty much any input or option you want, which is really convenient. And you can also change the channel names to whatever you want. I changed the OPS to Windows 10. And here we have our system options. We have our date and time. You can change the language and the input method of the system. We have our power status. You can power it on. You can have it go into standby mode or the last thing that you had it used. We have auto sleep, auto power off after no signal or after sleep. We have a scheduled power on or off, which is pretty convenient, especially if you're a teacher or something like that. You come in at a certain time uh, every day and you wanna have the smart board turn on at a certain time and day and turn off when you're done. We have temperature detection, high temperature protection. We have our system update. We have system security, which is very convenient, especially if you are a teacher or someone uh, in a business or something like that and you don't wanna have anybody messing with your smart board, these are definitely the options for you. So we have user management like I had before. I only have me and a guest set up, but you can have multiple users. You can also have them have a password or not to get into the system. We have our auto screen lock. You can lock the screen uh, when it sleeps after 10 seconds, one minute, 10 minutes. Uh, you can also lock and unlock the screen with a USB key which is really convenient, especially if you want to lock and unlock the screen and not have somebody find out what your password or pattern lock is. That is really convenient, and I'll show you how to use that in just a second. We also have USB permissions when it's turned on. Uh, the third-party applications won't be able to access any USB drives you have connected to the uh, smart board. We have channel permissions, so if you don't want somebody using or accessing the other inputs, you can have that locked down. We also have application locks. In case you don't want kids opening up certain apps, you can have that locked down with a passcode or a pattern. And we also have allow unknown sources to install third-party apps. Now let me show you how to use the USB key to lock and unlock the screen. So here we have the lock screen with USB. We'll turn that on. One other thing we need to make sure that we do to make this work is we need to have our password set up on our user management. So if we'll go under user management, I'll go under me. As you can see, lock screen password is off. We need to turn that on, set up a password. We can do the pattern unlock or the digital password. I like using a pattern. So once that is all set up, you can see that it's using the pattern unlock. Our lock USB is on, so we'll get out of that and we'll insert a USB into the USB slot and it'll automatically lock the screen. There you go. Now you will need to set up your USB flash drive, drive to accept to do this, but it's all in the manual how to do it. It's pretty much the same for all the USBs. Now, like I mentioned before, this is very useful for when you don't want somebody to know what password or pattern you're using to unlock and lock the smart board. So when you insert the USB to lock the screen, you'll typically take out your USB because you don't want somebody to get a hold of this. And then when you want to unlock the screen again, all you simply need to do is take your USB again, plug it into the USB drive, and it'll automatically un unlock the screen without you even having to put anything in. Super cool. Now, if we wanna switch over to our other user, we'll click up here, we'll click guest. It'll change over to the guest profile. You can either set it to use a password or not. I don't have a password in here, so it just automatically goes to that screen. But as you can see, you don't have access to any of the other apps we've installed under the other user and things like that. Like you can't access anything in our file list, anything we've shared. You can see that there are no pictures, anything like that. So it's pretty much locked down for every user. So you don't have to worry about other users accessing or looking at the stuff you have on your profile. And another really good thing about this being a matte screen is that it doesn't really show fingerprints 
when you're looking at the screen with the screen on. Once you turn it off, you'll be able to see some of the fingerprints that are on the screen, but you can easily wipe those away with a damp towel. Now I'm gonna let you listen to what these speakers sound like on the smart board. We'll just play a YouTube video here. So as you can hear, that is pretty loud. That was at about 75%. And you can also use this just like your regular tablet. So if you're watching YouTube, you can swipe down to have it go into a smaller mode here. You can swipe up to kind of show a little bigger picture and then swipe up again for it to be full screen. Let me turn up the volume again. What up? It's Dashi and my boys. Today we are here with the homies cartoon Squirrel yeah. and delirious. Now, so as you can hear, <laughs> the volume gets super loud. So if you're listening to voice or something like that, it's going to be very clear and loud for everybody to hear. Now let me show you how you can hook up a webcam to this as well. You can either use it with Windows because Windows again is just a PC, or you can also use the Android system. So I'll set up my camera here. I'll plug that into one of the USB 3.0s. Go into our system here. Go into our camera. And as you can see, it shows what the camera can see. And it looks pretty cool. <laughs> And you can also set up your microphone if your webcam has a built-in mic as well. So now we'll go into our Zoom application. I do have, I'm logged in right now. So we'll go into one of our meetings. Not now. We'll say start. It'll prepare the meeting. start our video and as you can see it shows me on the screen so this is what everybody else is going to see and as you can see it moves really quick there's really no latency at all so if you need to use this for a video conference or something like that you can very easily do so just by hooking up a webcam so as you guys saw this smart board has a ton of different features and a lot of different uses for everybody to use I am definitely very pleased with this smart board's performance. Like you saw, the picture quality is excellent. Sound quality is very good, especially if you need everybody to hear what you're doing uh, in your room. It's not going to be the best audio quality, but again, if you want that, just hook it up to a receiver. Again, touch works excellent on the smart board, whether you're using Android or your Windows system. And it has a ton of different connections for pretty much any situation you're going to need them for. So this isn't the end. Again, there is a part two video for this where we're going to be doing a deeper dive into the smart board. We're going to be co connecting a lot of different things up to the smart board. We're going to see how they look, how well they perform, as well as some of the other applications that have actually installed in on the Android system and how well that PC works under load. So if you guys want to check that out, definitely click on the video you've seen your screen right now. And again, if you guys want to pick this up yourself, I will be putting product links in the video description. So what did you guys think about the smart board? Will you be picking one up and what are you going to use it for? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.